Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're ready for another big weekend at Saratoga. Boy, Brian, it has been fast times at Saratoga thus far this summer. Fast times at Saratoga. Uh, good, good, uh, good racing. Good uh, performances last week. Very good performances. Echo Zulu, New York Thunder, uh, Elite Power, and Gun Knight uh, sprinting home in fast times in their sprint races. And then we also we saw a little controversy, but Forte got up in the gym dandy matt uh forte uh he knows how to finish races yeah it sure seems that way brian uh, and it seems like the blinkers kept him uh, in the game the entire race yeah a lot of people thought maybe he could come down i read ortiz in the irons uh they moved in late uh it looked like saudi crown came out early a little bit but certainly uh i read did a, ra a little race riding in that gym dandy did do you think he should have come down matt um, I, I will tell you, Brian, you know, I was rooting for my pick, uh, Forte, and uh, when I saw the stretch run and the replays and such, uh, back in the day, there's no question that that would have been a takedown. It's a little bit harder to tell these days when it is going to be and when it isn't going to be, but I guess I thought that he was coming down. Yeah, interesting. Uh, all we want is uniformity with those decisions, but it's hard to get it from place to place, from race to race. Uh, on to this week, Matt. Here's our cover boy. There he is, Cody's Wish, the top-rated horse in America, a clear favorite, Matt, for the Breeders' Cup Classic. He will have a test on Saturday. Funny I use that word, test, because we're going to talk about the test a little later in the show for right now we're going to jump to the whitney and the reason it's a test is because he's never won it two turns he's got to go nine furlongs he's stretching out to nine furlongs he's got to go two turns and he's got to do it at the graveyard of champions saratoga he's not a champion yet but he sure looked like one the last two years yeah, he certainly has. And, and in my eyes, Brian, he has gotten better and better and better. Um, Bill Mott has said he was, you know, a little bit of a tough horse when he was younger, a little bit harder to handle. And and uh, uh, he didn't really understand his job racing. But uh, as he is matured now, uh, a five-year-old, I, I thought his last two races were probably the best of his career, and especially the Met Mile when he made his move. He, it was just a powerful, overwhelming move, and and he went to the lead so quickly. It it just makes me feel like he's not going to have any trouble getting his first win beyond a mile going a mile and an eighth. He did go two turns last year when he won the dirt mile at uh, Keeneland, um, but he has not won at a distance farther than a mile. He's not won at a distance farther than a mile. Thank you for the two turn reminder of the dirt mile. Sometimes I forget that was two turns last year. Cody's wish. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, the, the Met mile in my eyes was his best race yet. He looked really good the way he stormed up on the outside and took over that race. And he'll face a lot of the same competition. It's a six-horse field here. David Aragona, the uh, morning line odds maker at Saratoga, had no trouble pegging Cody's wish as a heavy, heavy favorite here, one to two. There are five other good horses in the race, Matt. But on the other hand, there are five horses who are not Cody's wish in here. So it, it, it's hard to look anywhere else but Cody's wish. He's on a big winning streak. Uh, six wins in a row for trainer Bill Mott, Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott. He's also won four grade one. So he's looking for his fifth consecutive grade one win here. The question, though, remains nine furlongs, Saratoga, two turns. Uh, as good as he looked in the Met Mile, yeah, he is the horse to beat. He's, he's the most likely winner for sure. But there, he still needs to question, uh, answer this question on the way to the Breeders' Cup Classic. Cody's Wish, of course, a great story. 
and he's looking more and more like a great horse. He'll be a heavy favorite in the Whitney. Let's look at the rest of the field map. As I said, the other five horses I think are all interesting to a point, but are they truly grade one horses? Zandon is a grade one winner. He did that last year in the bluegrass. And I, I think he's the deserving second choice here off the Met Mile. He was second. He ran some good races last year, went a, a good second in the Jim Dandy, third in the Travers, over the track at Saratoga. Zandon, uh, probably the second choice on the rail with Joel Rosario in the irons. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I, I think he is the deserving second choice. Based on his consistency, he ha has so many excellent uh, top three finishes, but he has not been able to find the winner's circle since his victory in the uh, in the bluegrass. But he's facing he has been facing the best competition that he could run against since then. Uh, um, you know, I'm not trying to make excuses by by any means for Zandon, but you know, hey. We get what we get. All those top three finishes, throwing the Pennsylvania Derby in there, the Kentucky Derby, uh, 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 many people's pick uh, in, in a lot of those races. Um, only two career wins, Brian, but he's won a heck of a lot of money. I think more than $1.7 million. And he's done that with all those uh, first, second, uh, all those second and thirds since the Bluegrass. Yeah, a lot of seconds and thirds, a lot of good performances, uh, including last year's Kentucky Derby. But Zandon has not found the winner's circle in a long time, and that, that is a concern here. Maybe uh, also a concern is there's not a lot of pace in here. Zandon is is, is not going to be a pace setter in this Whitney from the rail, so he'll have to work out a trip from a little bit behind. Let's take a look real quick, Matt, at the Time Form U.S. pace projector for the Whitney. And uh, I think it's a question as to who will go to the lead in here. They have charge it off his win, pretty dominant win in the grade two Suburban last time, running a little bit uh, longer against less competition at Belmont Park. Uh, before that, he, he made a uh, maybe a premature move, I, I guess, in the Met Mile and kind of faded to fourth. So he was beaten by three other horses in the Met Mile that are running in the Whitney. Uh, charge it, a, a, an interesting horse. He could go to the lead. I, I kind of think another horse might be on the lead, but uh, Charge it, you think at least will be uh, pressing that pace to some extent. Yeah, and and he's a, to me, Brian, uh, for a Todd Pletcher horse, he, he's a hard horse for me to figure out. He's a hard horse for me to know when he's going to fire his top effort because you know, he, he's got a lot of uh, races where he maybe didn't run up to expectations, particularly after that huge victory uh, in the Dwyer uh, uh, last year, uh, his victory in the Dwyer, and then the one that you mentioned, uh, the recent one in the Suburban. He has done those while he has been on the lead. It, it's been a lead that, you know, is not a fast lead, but when he's on the lead, um, when he fires his best shot, he figures to be a factor in this race in one form or another. Yeah, yeah. Charge it, I think, will be a factor in this race one way or the other, whether it's on the lead or near the lead. He didn't get a chance to run at Saratoga last year, Matt. Uh, charge it, a talented horse who probably hasn't put it all together. Uh, there, there have been a, a few physical concerns along the way, uh, but Charge It uh, uh, might have the talent to start putting things together, and the Suburban was a positive step. I even compared him to Vino Rosso, and people are going to laugh at that com comparatively to what Vino Rosso did in his career and Todd Pletcher training from a few years ago. Uh, but uh, people didn't expect Vino Rosso to develop and keep getting better and uh, ultimately win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Charge it's a horse who I think still could have more under the hood and, and maybe that easy uh, confidence uh, uh, gaining win in the Suburban can kind of turn things around a little bit for Charge it in there. The horse I think might be on the lead, Matt, it also is the number three. His name is Giant Game. Giant Game was a good two-year-old 
and uh, he kind of went, uh, the, the wheels fell off a little bit uh, on the road to the Kentucky Derby last year for whatever reason. But now Giant Game seems to be turning it around, coming on in off two wins to the Whitney, disrespected on the morning line at 20 to 1. He has a little bit of speed. Yeah, he does. And, and you know, Dale Romans, uh, uh, when his horses are in good form, he will take a shot in the best races. And I think that's a good description for Giant Game. He's coming to uh, Saratoga off a win in the Corn Husker handicap that was run at Prairie Meadows. And he also had a nice allowance race. So he seems to be back in form, healthy. And again, I think a horse that uh, could be a factor in this race, but uh, will have to continue to get better uh, to be considered uh, a win contender or even maybe an exotics contender. I do think he's an exotics contender, Matt, here. I, I, I think there is talent shown early on in his career, and I think now he's turned it around. Don't sleep on the corn husker. Please don't sleep on the corn husker. Actually, I've seen horses do well in the corn husker and then turn around and do well in the Whitney uh, with question marks uh, all throughout this field, whether it's be breaking through and winning a big race or or just Cody's wish trying to stretch out to nine furlongs. Giant game and improving horse again uh, could be one to watch, especially if he's allowed to lope along, at, lope along the lead at any point in this Whitney. The, horse, the next horse, I said every horse in the race is interesting to some extent. The next horse in the field is the horse I like least of the six. However, for me, two through six, there's not a lot of gap there. I just feel like if Last Samurai can bring his race from Oaklawn Park anywhere else, maybe it'll be Saratoga, I don't know. But if he can run like he does at Oaklawn Park anywhere else, he becomes a very dangerous horse. Yeah, he do, he does, Brian. Uh, um, and whether it's at o at Oaklawn Park or at other tracks, uh, he usually runs a pretty good race. Not necessarily a win, but a pretty good race, like he did in the Stephen Foster and the Ali Sheba when he was fourth. But you're absolutely right, Brian. Uh, uh, Oaklawn Park is his place. I think he's got uh, uh, six career wins. He's won a lot of money. Uh, four, I think four of those wins were at Oakland Park. All the big ones are at Oakland Park. All the best performances are at Oakland Park. What that means is he loves Oakland Park, yes, but also he's got it in him to run big if he happens to take to this Saratoga surface going nine furlongs in the Whitney. So I said I like him sixth best, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if he runs a good race. Number five, Way to Barrio. Uh, Irad Ortiz Jr. Uh, 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 Richard Dutrow uh, making his second start for a new barn, Matt. I actually thought he ran a sneaky good race in the Met Mile because he was out there early battling for the lead briefly, and then he just dropped steadily back, and then he made a run on the turn and actually ran pretty well down the stretch. He was lapped on Zandon for second in that Met Mile. Could he improve in his second start for his new barn? I guess he could, Brian. Uh, um, he was not in the barn of Rick Dutrow very long uh, prior to that Met Mile um, and has stayed in his barn uh, since the since the Met Mile. You know, again, uh, he could be a factor in there. Um, he, As you mentioned, he was up on the lead early in that Met Mile. Could he be up on the lead uh, in in this race? We, you know, one thing we know for sure, he'll he'll. He'll get a strong ride from Irad in there. Uh, Irad always trying to uh, do anything he can to get the wins in the big races. Um, and the Whitney is certainly one of them. Uh, uh, overall, Rick Dutrow's stats have not been particularly great since he's returned to training. Uh, uh, he returned to training and won a couple races pretty quickly, but... Uh, uh, has not won many races since then and and has not won a race at Saratoga yet. Yeah, uh, Rick, Rick Dutrow is uh, this is the best horse in his barn right now. And White Barrio again, I thought he ran pretty darn well in the Met Mile. If you look at him the whole race, uh, he might have been second best in that race, especially considering his back to, uh, to the front and then and kind of well back. Other horses certainly passed him. Um, 
uh, early on. And then he ran on well in the stretch. Nine furlongs might be a question why to Barrio, but that's the distance of his biggest win, the grade one Florida Derby last year. And he is, as we looked at that time form, U.S. pace projected one more time, he is uh, one of the three horses who potentially you would think could be on the lead here in the Whitney. So, uh, again, Cody's wish and the rest, the, the rest are all interesting. Uh, Cody's wish given a lot of love for all those wins, including uh, Saratoga last year. Uh, but uh, he's certainly the one to beat the Whitney. The test, I think, is a better betting race, a more interesting race. We're going to look at this field because it's a nice little field here, Matt. Eight three-year-old fillies going in this grade one seven furlong test at Saratoga. And uh, it, it's, as we sometimes get, it's seven furlongs and, and a mile. Uh, it, it's a clash of two turn versus one turn horses. And we have some real stars in here, Matt, including the inside and the outside in the eight horse field for the test. Yeah, like so many of the big races thus far at uh, Saratoga, um, amongst the field, uh, there has been a really uh, cool head-to-head -head matchup. And, you know, not that they're necessarily always going to win, but but the test is another one of them with, with Pretty Mischievous on the rail. She is the division leader at this point uh based on her especially on her last couple wins that have that have come in the acorn at belmont park going around one turn and then before that in the kentucky oaks she's won four out of five races after the uh after the acorn trainer brendan walsh uh, i think was, had in his mind that he was going to cut her back to the seven furlongs in the test and she's going to go up against the undefeated maple leaf mel yeah maple leaf mel was the other star i was talking about maple leaf mel has been a superstar so far in his career the new york bred philly has never been headed and has looked to be doing things easily down the stretch uh, she is a big talented sprinter uh, for sure, and, and it's a it's a very interesting matchup of a horse coming out of uh, longer races against a horse who's been specialized in sprinting between those two favorites, pretty mischievous Maple Leaf Mel. No idea who uh, the betters will make as the favorite in here, Matt. Uh, pretty mischievous was given, uh, we, we gave a little bit of love to because she won the grade two, Rachel Alexander, the grade one Kentucky Oaks. And of course, the grade one acorn last time, but uh, they very well may go with the undefeated sprinter to her outside Maple Leaf Mel. Now, we said there wasn't a whole lot of speed in the Whitney nine furlongs. Who's going to be on the lead in the Whitney? In the test, it is a question of who's going to be on the lead, but we know there's speed in this seven furlong race, Matt. Let's take a look at that time form US pace projector. And uh, you'll see that big red button there if you're watching us today, the fast pace of the test. And, and as you handicap this race, it's pretty clear that the fur will fly, as the old timers say, early because Maple Leaf Mel, as I said, has never been headed. But she's got some real speed to contend with in here, Matt. Money's gold, uh, maybe clearly unhinged, maybe Jersey Pearl. This should be a fast pace on Saturday in the test. Yeah, Brian, we got horses that like the lead, and we are talking about sprinter speed, sprinter front end horses. We are talking about fast horses. You mentioned Money's Gold. Uh, uh, she was a sensation early in her career when she just fired off some uh, open length victories with big, big speed figures. Uh, um, we we know she's been going to the lead and that's what she does and that's what maple leaf mel does and and a couple of others that are you know they are sprinters sprinter kind of speed may also get out there and and the 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 test feels to me brian like a race that you know to use a handicapping adage pace makes the race Pace makes the race, and seven furlongs is a tricky distance. Uh, it, it's a it's a bit of an elongated sprint, and if you run too fast early, if you run contended uh, too much early in these sprints, it's very tough to go all the way. So 
it'll be interesting. Interesting for me to see what Maple Leaf Mel does. Like I said, she's I've said it a few times already. She's never been headed in a race, but she's never faced speed like this. Uh, the, the fact that we have pretty mischievous, clearly the division leader right now with her three out of four graded stakes wins and 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 she's won big races. Uh, Maple Leaf Mel has looked awesome sprinting. It, it, it took me back, Matt, to years ago when I, I was up there at Saratoga to see a great field in the test, a, a smaller field, but a, a field that included Mom's Command uh, and Lady Secret. And Lady Secret was uh, not going to let Mom's Command catch her that day in the test. But uh, perhaps Maple Leaf Mel has even more pace competition than Lady Secret did that uh, that year so many years ago. Again, I'm showing my age, Matt, but uh, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw this matchup here in the test. There are six other horses and there are six other good horses. You talked about Money's Gold a little bit, Matt, and Money's Gold needs to be talked about as soon as good as she looked in winning her first three races. Big speed figures, big margins of victory all over uh, uh, three different racetracks. You know, her race at Churchill Downs where she got beat uh, in the eight bells, I thought was game as heck uh, as she got passed in the stretch and then came on again. Last time, mile 16th, probably not her game, but she didn't run bad in the acorn. Wouldn't shock me to see Money's Gold uh, bounce back with a really good effort back to sprinting. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, the You know, the fourth in the acorn, you know, may turn off some... Uh, some betters, but yeah, I agree that mile and a sixteenth is, is is probably too far for money's gold. And and I, I go back and think about those first races in her career. Man, she's fast. She is fast. The fur will fly. The number six, as we're working our way uh, backwards through this field, Matt, is Dorth Vader. And Dorth Vader, ridden by Johnny Velasquez, the last few, and again here in the test has uh she's popped up in florida with some very good performances uh including the devona dale where she won off um she was beaten in the gulfstream park oaks and she never really got uh much respect off those races in florida and i and i guess there was a couple performances that made you think north vader wasn't as good but the, the race she ran in the kentucky oaks even though she faded just a little bit and then last time in the acorn, Dorth Vader is a really nice filly and should not be ignored as a, as a filly who probably will be getting with one of the fillies who will be getting first jump on however fast that early pace may be. Yeah. And, and when she won that Devon of Dale at Gulfstream Park, she was a big, uh, a big price in there. And, and in the acorn, she, you know, she ran a heck of a race. She was beaten only ahead to uh, uh, pretty mischievous, um, so an interesting horse, and and she has had a barn change. She's now in the barn of New York-based trainer George Weaver, who uh, when I hear George Weaver, I always think you got to watch out for him at Saratoga, and, and that's been the case so thus far. He, he's having a really, really good meet at Saratoga with young horses, uh, just to, to, to digress for a second. Uh, if you're at Saratoga and he's got a, a first time starter in a two year old race, you 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 better take a, a look at him. So his barn is going really well. Um, and Dor uh, uh, Dorth Vader, yeah, uh, is going to sit off the fast pace. Yeah. Yeah. Dorth Vader, interesting filly uh, and one not to ignore and one who probably will be slightly ignored again. Uh, in the betting, we have her at eight to one, and and with her accomplishments this year, eight to one is pretty attractive on a very nice filly. Uh, the five interests me, Matt. It's not often that I ever peg a Chad Brown horse in a in a stakes race, let alone any race, but uh, let alone a, a big stakes race as a real long shot. But in, Interpol eight, I, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Interpol eight uh, is is an interesting horse. Number one, she's going to rally with all this speed. And number two, I think maybe she had just a little bit of issue last time when well beaten by Maple Leaf Mel. Yeah, and and I think interpolate is probably the the uh, pronunciation. Um, was fourth in the victory ride, but but has some good races. And you know we don't. Uh, 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 although we always think of Chad Chad Brown um, uh, with turf horses, he's good on the dirt. He's good with sprinters. As we well know, um, Interpolate was was second, B 
beaten by only a head in the in the Beaumont Stakes, a Grade Two at Keeneland, and had a win uh, at Aqueduct. So you know another interesting interesting horse. And like you said, uh, Chad Brown with a long shot. Uh, hey, hard to pass by. Yeah, and if they run for uh, 21 and 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 in the 44 flat range, as we suspect they might on Saturday in the test, uh, she's a filly who should come running to some extent. She'll be passing horses in the stretch if she is uh, more like the Beaumont and less like uh, the last one against Maple Leaf. No, w watch out for her a little bit here, uh, probably at double-digit odds in this field. Number four, another very interesting filly, Jersey Pearl, Louis Saez. Jersey Pearl has never lost on dirt, Matt, and Jersey Pearl has looked the part two races back at Churchill Town. She beat a very nice filly uh, to win uh, in, in a tough race, and then last time at Ellis Park, she absolutely aired. Yeah, two nice wins, two nice allowance wins uh, in Kentucky. Um, she is a stakes winner. That was on the artificial surface at Turfway Park, but like you said, she has taken a liking to the dirt yeah undefeated three starts on the dirt watch out for jersey pearl uh another one that might sit off the early lead but she's got a lot of speed too so i, I think she'll be involved early but she could be getting very good at the right time as she comes to saratoga for this big race on saturday tap and josie i think is a deserving long shot uh coming up north to saratoga on saturday but clearly unhinged is another one she's coming from california match she's two for three uh hard to tell how good clearly unhinged is as she gets a test and the fact that michael mccarthy brings her east to the test a uh, little reminiscent of uh, a few weeks ago in the haskell with richard mandela uh clearly unhinged obviously is uh her connections her good connections are showing her some confidence here by running her in the test yeah, debut winner uh, at Santa Anita for McCarthy and an allowance winner with a fourth place finish in the Santa Anita Oaks between those two wins. And I think, you know, that fourth place, that, that that's what, you know, puts in your mind, like, how good is she? Well, we'll find out. Yeah, and, and that was uh, that was a big test for her second start of the year. She made a move in that Santa Anita Oaks, again, showing a lot of confidence by putting her in the Santa Anita Oaks and only... Her second start, she came back with a tough win last time. Um, I, I think she's probably like uh, uh, like the horse we just talked about, Jersey Jersey Pearl. I think clearly unhinged is probably a very talented horse and uh, one who could surprise, especially if she's off the pace just a little bit in the test. All right, Matt, it's time. It's time to make our top picks here for two huge races at Saratoga on Saturday. Another big card at Saratoga. We talked about the two biggest ones, the Whitney and the Test. I'm going to let you go first. We'll do the Whitney first, Matt. Okay, Brian. Um, uh, Cody's Wish, uh, looking to continue that uh, that win streak, uh, continue the win streak, just as her his stablemate uh, Elite Power did uh, earlier at Saratoga for for Bill Mott. Um, yep. We got he's got to answer the question about the mile and an eighth. But like I said, uh, he was so impressive in the Met Mile. I, I just feel like uh, that extra furlong is not going to to make a difference. I think Cody's wish, like I said, uh, with the top picks last week, I think Cody's wish is just too good for the other horses in this field. I agree with you, Matt, and, and and often I like to try to beat the favorites. I tried to beat the favorites last time, although Gunite was that uh, down close to elite power last time. I was a little surprised by the odds, but that was a heck of a race. Could be a big week for Belmont with elite power winning Saturday at Saratoga. He's got Warlike Goddess as the favorite uh, in, in a race to be run today, actually Thursday, the Glen Falls, Glens Falls, which is uh drawn a nice field on the turf at saratoga but i'm with you I, I with these two top picks i went with the horses i think most likely to win cody's wish is certainly the most likely to win i, I agree with you everything you said i think he's just getting better and better to the point where he should win this whitney 
don't like the odds. I think the way to bet this race is either exotics or uh, uh, multi-race wagers because I, I, I really do expect Cody's Wish to beat this field. One of the other five could step up, run a good race. Cody's Wish will probably not be one of the uh, the graveyard of champions losers at Saratoga on Saturday. And in the test, unfortunately, we both went with one of the two favorites. She might go off the second choice, but we're both on pretty mischievous, Matt. Yeah, Brian, and as I mentioned, when we were uh, analyzing the field, I, I I have tons of respect for Maple Leaf Mel, and, and it, it's another horse with a great story. And maybe the factor that will make Maple Leaf Mel the favorite is that uh, uh, he is owned by uh, – the coach, Bill Purcells, uh, the Super Bowl, multi-Super Bowl winning coach of the New York Giants. And, and that will certainly attract uh, uh, a lot of betters. But like you said, Brian, this is the toughest spot that Mel has ever been in. And there is tons and tons of fast sprinter speed. Uh, um, it just seems to set up for a horse coming off the pace and to me, the best horse to fit that ticket is the division leader, Pretty Mischievous. Yeah, I'm with you again, Matt. Uh, I think she's the most likely winner. Um, the, the race certainly sets up for someone to rally. Uh, just from a strictly rooting standpoint, I would love to see the New York Red Maple Leaf Mel continue her unbeaten record and actually win this. But the pace makes it tough. The way she's won her races, though, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Maple Leaf Mel is second or third early, and then she becomes even tougher. But pace makes the race. You said it pretty mischievous is the horse to beat in the test. I will be trying, though, uh, interpolate as a long shot because I think she'll be running down the lane as well. Matt. All right, that's the show, the Whitney and the test big weekend. For those fans of Del Mar, we will be talking more about Del Mar in the near future. But uh, again, we went with Saratoga this week, Matt. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, Brian. Uh, um, yeah, shortly after taping the show early this morning, uh, I'm going to be on my way back to Saratoga. So if any of you horse center fans are there, please say hello. Say hello to Matt. Yeah, I love it, Matt. Maybe by the Big Red Fountain, maybe somewhere else on the grounds, maybe getting a hot dog as Matt likes to do over there uh, in the uh, uh, near the paddock at Saratoga. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to give them hints to find you, Matt, but uh, you, you, you tend to stand out in the crowd. I want to thank everybody for watching this week, and sure, I, surely I wish you the best of luck. Thanks to Candace Curtis, our friend in the Louisville office, who I think is also at Saratoga this weekend for the Race Graphics Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. We also appreciate Timeform US for the pace projectors that we use in the show. Once again, though, most thanks go to you for watching every week. Have a great weekend. Good luck at the races. We'll see you next week right here on another edition of Horse Center.